Many of you might be wondering what kind of hardware you should choose for your next PFSense installation, whether you are installing it at home, in some kind of lab, or even at business. Hi, I'm Leo, and I have a list of six different groups, from group six being the cheapest one, and group one being the most expensive one. Before we consider different options, there are a couple of things to remember right away. Please avoid Realtek network cards whenever possible. To my understanding, Realtek relies a lot of software emulation in terms of traffic processing, network acceleration and so forth, where Intel's network cards are much more relying on the hardware acceleration and therefore uh, Realtek driver support is somewhat limited compared to the Intel ones. I'm not saying Realtek might not work, but if you are looking for that absolute 100% stability, then stick with Intel's network cards. Another common question to clear out of the way is that you cannot install PFSense on Raspberry Pi or any kind of such device. So, let's see what kind of list I have prepared for you. In group number six, we are talking about uh, from zero up to 100 euros or $100 price range. In this price range, well, a very worth considering devices are, for example, Fujitsu Futro S920 Thin Clients. These are very solid devices, especially for entry level installations if you want to check out whether PFSense is your thing or not or if you have a very limited budget and you just want to kind of get started and upgrade sometimes in the future. Now, please notice that these uh, thin clients do not have enough Ethernet ports by default, so you will need to buy a separate uh, network card, which is obviously a PCIe network card. Due to very limited case of these devices, you will need a PCIe riser because the PCI slot on the motherboard on these thin clients is into 90 degrees angle compared to the PCI slot at the back of the this uh, chassis. So you will need a riser to kind of change that angle for your network card. Please notice that not all PCI risers are supported, so double check that information before you go and buy one. I'll do my best to provide some information in the description of this video, but unfortunately I don't have that uh, as of now. Another solid option is HP T620 Plus Thin Client plus model being the bigger one because they are smaller one and bigger one available as well. These are also old thin clients which you can find on eBay for very solid price. And obviously in this price range we can include pretty much any second hand PC which is obviously years old. I'm not gonna list every one of them because the availability depends a lot of where you happen to live. But just remember that you will probably need to uh, buy a separate uh, network card to be able to have that at least two physical Ethernet ports for your PFSense. Um, now moving on to group number five, we are talking now about from 100 up to 300 euros or dollars options. And in this group, we obviously have these Chinese brands from Protectly, Cotton, and whatever those brands happen to be. These are very solid options for home and maybe lab use. I personally wouldn't use them for businesses for a couple of reasons. One of them being that many of these devices have very limited uh, support, if any at all. Do that if you are buying them all the way from China, then sending your device back to China and expecting it in a very short time might be something to consider because uh, in many cases you might be waiting for months before receiving your um, repair device. Another thing to consider about these devices is a somewhat limited BIOS or UFI 
uh, software support so that means that many of these devices might not receive any kind of updates in the future whether there are some critical vulnerabilities security issues, performance issues, whatnot. Otherwise, these devices are probably very solid for what they are meant to be used uh, for. And I could personally use one at home, for example, just to kind of test stuff and maybe run some lab environment and so forth. Moving on to group number four, we are talking now about price range between $300 and $500 or euros. First of all, we have, for example, a couple of NetGate devices, them being 1100 and 2100 devices, which are very solid for small businesses, home use and so forth. In addition to that, we have Shuttle X PC Slim PCs, bare-born machines, bare-born meaning that the devices are not coming with pre-installed RAM memory, SSD drives and so forth, so that's something you should take into a consideration. Shuttle XP C Slim PCs are very solid because they are funless, they are using Intel Ethernet cards, they are very modern in terms of having BIOS updates, Intel CPUs, very kind of power savvy and so forth. I'm personally using Shuttle DS68U model from 2016. That means that the device is about like seven years old. I don't have any plans replacing it because it has been rock solid. It has been secure. The performance is great. In addition to Shuttle, we have also Fitlet 2 and Fitlet 3 devices, which are even smaller factors. These devices are also modular on some level, so you can adjust uh, your model before buying one. You can have these extra Ethernet ports and whatnot. One thing to consider about these Fitlet devices is that they are having very, very limited availability, at least for now. So it is very possible that you are not able to buy one in a place you happen to live in. So that's something to consider. In this price range, we also have a couple of ASRock NUC devices, which are also having a dual Intel based Ethernet ports, one of them being even a two and a half gig model. But please double check are these drivers supported in uh, PFSense because two and a half gig is still somewhat tricky in terms of driver support. That will obviously change sometimes in the future, but please make sure that the driver support is uh, available before you buy such device. In this price range, we also have available Intel Kit 11 Pro i3 NUC. Just remember that this Intel NUC is also a bare-born machine, so you will need to install a memory and an SSD drive afterwards. Moving on to group number three, we are talking now about from 500 up to 1000 euros or dollars. We have even more options from Shuttle XP Slim PCs with, for example, Intel i7 CPUs, which are absolutely overkill for your PFSense. But hey, if you want to have that extra CPU performance, this is something to probably consider. We also have NetGate 4100 uh, model available in this price range. And in addition to that, we also have a super micro, super server, a small factor PCs, which are basically PCs uh, designed for industrial use. Industrial use meaning that they are designed to work in a very dirty environment where there can be dust, sand and whatnot going on. We also have Intel Kit 11 Pro i5 i7 NUX as well, also them being bare bones machines. And in this price range, we also have AAE on brand by Asus. To my understanding, at least here in Europe, this brand has very, very limited availability, but at least I want to bring it up in case you can find one uh, in your location. 
Moving on to group number two, now we are talking from 1000 up to 1500 or 1500 if you prefer dollars or euros. In this price range, we have NetGate 4100 Max, 6100, and obviously 8200 Max, which is a brand new model by NetGate. We also have a lot of different models from Supermicro, these super server industrial PCs, and a couple of models from Aeon as well. Uh, in this price range, I will strongly recommend you going with the NetGate devices because you can get that NetGate's technical support, which is obviously a very solid option, especially for business use. Moving on to group number one. Now, obviously, this is the most expensive group. And as many of you can guess, you basically the sky is the limit in this group. We are talking from one thousand five hundred dollars or euros up to whatever price you prefer. So that can be thousands of dollars or euros. In this class, we have NetGate fifteen hundred models. And in addition to that, we have basically any kind of Dell or HP rack servers based on x86 technology. Basically, you can have the most powerful rack servers and you can install your PFSense onto it as long as the network cards are supported in terms of drivers. And that's something you should definitely take care about before buying one. But assuming that you are buying a firewall in this price range, I don't think that you will be considering this list in the first place, but I wanted to bring it up in case you are still willing to spend such amount of money on your firewall, then you know that you can basically pick any kind of servers. In addition to these groups, the, here are a couple of sh tips I want to share with you. There are available like PC engines, APU to uh, PCBs, where you are able to install your PFSense onto. But the problem with these PCBs is that you need to create your uh, chassis around it for yourself, whether you can find one suitable already, or you need to kind of 3D print or whatever. So I wouldn't recommend them unless these building things for yourself is your thing, then in that case, of course, you can consider them. And as of conclusion of this video, I strongly recommend you picking your device based on your budget and your needs. Another recommendation is to consider NetGate devices regardless of their price range. By the way, this is not sponsored by NetGate in any shape or form. I'm strongly recommending NetGate due to driver support in your PFSense and also having that technical support, especially if you are doing a business installation and you want to have that peace of mind, if I can put it that way. One thing to keep in mind is that your PFSense installation will most probably be used in the years to come. So that's something to keep in mind while choosing this hardware, especially in terms of stability, even years after your installation. I hope I was able to help you choose your next PFSense hardware in case I've missed some models or things. Please consider sharing them in the comment section of this video. My name is Leo. Thanks for watching. Bye.